Welcome back to the final lesson of our parables of Jesus. Our parable today is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13, the parable of the unjust steward. He also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I remove from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. There have been times that I have noticed rather unscrupulous characters in real life and in fiction that are so clever and inventive as it relates to criminal and illegal behavior. They are the jewel thieves, the bank robbers, hustlers and such that plot and plan their way on how to swindle, steal, and scam people, organizations, and institutions out of their wealth. Our culture tends to immortalize them for their efforts, glamorize them. My thoughts are, if they only use half that energy and intuition to labor honestly, they could be just as rich and not have to look over their shoulders to see who is pursuing them. Here we are at the last in our series of the parables of Jesus. And this parable is arguably one of the most difficult among those recorded in the Gospels. One wonders if those in the days of our Lord's walk on earth, if they grasped the nuances of this most unusual of parables. Unlike many of the parables, we don't identify the characters as being God or the Jews, despite many of the scholars' best efforts to do so. For many say the rich man is God and the shrewd manager represents the Jews or Israel. Well, I think that's too much of a stretch. Jesus simply asks his disciples to look at the way the world operates with its shrewdness towards the temporal, earthly treasure and pursuing the comforts that it can afford them and then poses the challenge of whether or not our efforts should surpass those, seeing how much greater reward we await. I know many have made good, solid conclusions by examining every jot and tittle in this parable, but I really believe the simplest answer tends to be the most correct. The simple answer in this parable is found in verse 8. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. We can calculate what the measure of an oil is and the percentage that he cut it down to, and the same with the measure of wheat, and examine the culture and traditions of the times. But even after all this is done, we are left with the sons of this world and their nature. And that hasn't changed across the centuries. And neither has the admonition to be more shrewd than they, seeing we too have eternal rewards and treasures. 
Another great truth is taught, which we find elsewhere in Scripture. For verse 13 of Luke 16 tells us, No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus clearly taught this in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. It is not money that is evil. It is the love of money. Paul tells us in his letter to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So we must not let money become our master. We must become the master over our money. After all, it is the currency of the world. What shall we use it for? Our own pleasure and enjoyment? Is that not what the dishonest manager was accused of? Wasting his possessions in verse 1 of Luke 16? Well, surely we must live and eat and exist while we're here. Yet, is this our sole reason for earning? Did not the rich man have within his own power to care for poor Lazarus and chose not to in Luke 16, 25? Did not the rich fool think only of accumulating more and more and bigger barns for himself in Luke 12? Who is this friend we should make by the use of our unrighteous wealth? He may be nearer than you think. Matthew 25, 37 through 40, we read, Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick and in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Is this not the same one who said in John 15, 13 through 14, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Have you been a friend to Jesus with your wealth? I hope you have enjoyed and learned and gained something from our study in the parables these last 31 days. And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the lessons taught in God's Holy Word, the Bible.